What made gods powerful? Some of you might say it was their weapons. You would also agree that some mythical weapons were more lethal than others. Some were deadly due to their inherent strength, some due to their symbolism, and others due to what they were allegedly capable of doing to their owners. This list of the most lethal mythological weapons examines how these power carriers were not only effective tools for wreaking havoc, but also significant symbols for the cultures and civilizations they represented. Of course, most of these weapons can be pure myth, but others are said to still be in existence. Now, let's begin. Number 10. Mjolnir the word Mjolnir means pulverizer, or that which smashes. As part of a bet with the god of mischief, Loki, two dwarf brothers named Broker and Itri first erected it. Loki, however, cheated to win the wager by biting the dwarves while they worked on the hammer. The result was a handle that was too short. Thor, however, was pleased with it for its exceptional qualities and employed it to defeat giants in the Jotunheim realm. Mjolnir has a number of unique characteristics. For instance, it could be compacted and crammed into a little space, which is why Thor typically wore Mjolnir tucked under a shirt. The hammer never missed its mark. It always came back to its original owner after being hurled. It was also red hot to touch and, as befitted the Thunder God, plus it fired lightning. Given its short staff with these properties, Thor wore special gloves called the Yarngriper that allowed him to handle this device and dangerous weapon. Number 9. Zeus's Thunderbolt In order to defeat Kronos, Zeus opened the Hells of Tartarus to unleash all sorts of creatures that helped to overthrow the Titans. This includes the one-eyed giant known as the Cyclops. These creatures forged three magical items for Zeus and his two brothers, a trident for Poseidon, a helmet for Hades, and a thunderbolt for Zeus. And these weapons were used to good effect against the Titans. Zeus personified storm and sky, and that was what the thunderbolt represented. The sky god was capable of instantly striking someone from a distance and killing them. He could instantaneously ride the lightning and come down from the skies, and that is precisely why Zeus's thunderbolt is arguably one of the strongest and most lethal weapons in mythology. Number eight, Medusa's head. Despite frequently being misunderstood, the myth of Medusa is well known. In any case, Medusa utilized her snake-haired head and hair, as well as other parts of her, as a weapon, both while she was alive and even after she had died. Medusa was cursed to turn anybody who looked at her into a stone, and even when Perseus beheaded Medusa, her skull still bore the curse. Perseus also presented the Aegis and Medusa's head to Athena after his triumph, and the battle goddess combined the two objects to create an even more lethal weapon. The most famous use of this weapon was when Perseus used it to turn Atlas into stone. Number 7. The Trident Even if you're unfamiliar with Greek mythology, you would surely still associate the trident with the sea. And so, symbolically too, the trident is the weapon worn by Poseidon, the god of sea, modeled after common fishing tridents that ancient Greek fishermen used to spear fish. The magical three-pronged spear has three blades, but Poseidon's trident wasn't just any old fishing pole. It was a beautiful and exceptionally sharp sword that Poseidon would rarely be seen without. It was forged by the blacksmith Hephaestus with assistance from the Cyclops. Poseidon and could create enormous tsunami waves by smashing the trident to the ground, which might destroy entire armadas of ships or flood entire islands. The weapon might potentially rupture any barrier or armor and trigger earthquakes. Number 6. Gunger this is the spear of All-Father Odin, one of the most significant Asgardian gods and the father of Thor. It is also referred to as the second most iconic weapon in Norse mythology after Mjolnir. The spear was forged and possessed by dwarves at first, but Loki took it from them and gave it to Odin. There wasn't much more information about Gungnir in the prose and poetic Eddas at the time. All that is said is that the tip is inscribed with runes, that Odin used it to fight the monstrous wolf Fenrir during Ragnarok, and that the magical spear is so well balanced that it always hits a target regardless of the use user's ability. Number 5. Sudarshana Chakra One of the most revered gods in Hinduism is Vishnu, also referred to as the Preserver. He is a protector of mankind who appears on Earth as a variety of avatars in order to battle demons and maintain cosmic stability. Of course you need a weapon to battle demons, and Vishnu's is among the most lethal ones available. The Sudarshana Chakra is a discus with 108 blades. This pattern represents the Hindu image of the Wheel of Life, as well as Vishnu's connection to the sun. Real chakram spinning disc weapons may have served as an inspiration for or as a model for Vishnu's weapon. The Sudarshana Chakra was made by Vishwakarma, the builder of the gods, from sun dust and pieces of Shiva's trident, according to the legend surrounding it. The weapon can destroy anything and traditionally cannot be used by mortals. However, it was wielded by the hero Arjuna after Krishna, an incarnation of Vishnu gave it to him. Number 4. Excalibur 
The sword of King Arthur requires little introduction. The majority of traditional legends tend to portray Arthur wielding the mighty sword as having tremendous strength. Arthur could use Excalibur to destroy an entire army. The sword also has the ability to release a light that blinds foes. Even the scabbard was said to be miraculous. Some versions claim that it has the ability to stop bleeding, giving it a powerful defense against death. Last but not least, Excalibur is described in most myths as being the same as the sword in the stone. Number 3. The Spear of Longinus The Spear of Longinus, which is seen in Christian traditions as the spear that penetrated the body of Christ during his crucifixion, is more of a religious icon than a weapon. The actual deed, which is mentioned very briefly in the Gospel of John, was to confirm that Christ had died, not to torment him more. It's interesting to note that John never named the soldier who committed the crime. The identity was only mentioned in the fictional Gospel of Nicodemus. Many artifacts in the world today make claims to be the Spear of Longinus, or to contain its components. However, none are accepted by all religions or are universally accepted. Number 2. Kusanagi According to Japanese legend, the storm deity Susanu initially discovered the Kusanagi sword in the tail of an eight-headed dragon. The sun goddess Amaterasu received it from the deity, who then gave it to her grandson Ninigi, who had come to earth to reign over Japan. Likewise, the sword, one of three holy relics of Japanese royal regalia, has been handed down over the years, but no one has ever seen the sword since it is always kept concealed with the other regalia. Kusanagi is said to possess supernatural abilities. One example of this is when the hero Yamato Matu Takuru used the sword to cut back the grass that Ainu tribesmen set ablaze around him, so the name of the sword, which means lawnmower, is appropriate. Furthermore, the sword serves as a marker of national pride, making Kusanagi equivalent to Excalibur in Britain. And number one, Tearfing. The sword Tearfing was among the most lethal of the terrifying weapons seen in Norse mythology. The dwarves Dulin and Dvalin were imprisoned by King Svafrilami, the grandson of the deity Odin, and compelled to manufacture him a sword. This resulted in the creation of Tearfing. The golden hilt of the sword never rusted and has the ability to slice through iron and rocks with ease. It glowed like fire, adding to its menacing appearance. However, the dwarves made the decision to use the sword as a means of vengeance and laid curses on it. First, every time the sword was drawn, it was destined destined to kill. Second, the sword was said to be the root of three terrible evils. Third, Svalfralami would be killed by the sword. When Svalfralami learned of this, he attempted to murder the dwarves, but they managed to escape. And when the berserker Angrim killed Svalfralami, Tyrfing's third curse became true. And this brings us to the end of the video. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time around with another amazing mythical story. Until then, stay mythically mad.